Hey, this is Lauren with TMF Apparel USA, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the Cathari software, maybe a couple tips and tricks that uh, you may or may not know about. So right here we have our Cathari open. This is uh, used with my FreeJet 330TX, but I can just presume that a lot of the layout is going to be a lot of the same for the other print settings here. Um, I have a general uh, image loaded in here, one that I print pretty often. Um, one thing that is neat, if you have a print that you need to crop or resize, you can easily do that here with selection, new selection, put it over your image, go to selection, crop, it will crop that and it also makes that into a new file, it does not affect your original print file. Anytime you alter any of the adjustments on the image, it does make it into a new, a new file in Cathari. So if we were to take the image, flip it, that's a new file. As you can see now we have three, so it's not affecting your initial image. I'm going to close these out. So that is helpful for cropping images. Um, rotating them, you can see here, flip vertical, flip horizontal. So if you were going to pull in something that you would normally DTG print and you wanted to print it DTF, that's an easy way to do that. Your rotations here are also under image. Um, skew, you shouldn't really be skewing them um, for, for what you're doing there. All right, the next thing you'll see over here are Q-RIP. If you don't have this window open, go to window view up here and just boot up. Uh, well, it would say we would look like this. We would go to um, view, show Q-RIP. I like to have this up here. Um, this shows our image size. Now, if we just put our import in, you can see here we're 5.2 by 6.1 inches. Um, I'd like to scale that up, put in here whatever your scale is that you would like it to be. Make sure it's uh, uniform scaling and uh, that'll size it up for you. Make sure your position on your platen is in the correct place to print. But most of the time you're going to run that center top. Um, if I'm going to print a pocket, I would print this top right uh, for the pocket instead of center on the right. If you're printing, a, say, a left side, that's where I would put it, because that's going to be correspond to the left side of the shirt, um, and so on and so forth. Now, another thing you can do here is you can obviously mirror the image when you print it. You can invert the image when you print it. Shouldn't really have a need to do that in here whatsoever. Um, some other interesting things that you would need to learn is your choke and your underbase percentage. This is the ink percentage laid down uh, for your white ink. So if you're running something that doesn't need quite as strong a choke or an underbase, you can change these, knock them down. When I do DTF prints, I change these down to about 40-50% just so I don't have puddles of white on my film. And sometimes I'll do multiple prints. On uh, your color strength here as well, you can knock that down to uh, different different percentages. If I'm printing something that's almost like a neon type color, I will knock the color strength down a little bit and that gives you a little bit of a brighter neon looking color. Your color booster, um, you don't use that a whole lot, but sometimes I do on something that has bright, light, vibrant colors like this. Your platen placement, leave that alone. This is the standard platen that I use on my free jet, so I don't mess with that either. Now, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to go into our print settings here. In our print settings, we have our environment. Um, I use, when I print here, I use pretty much everything on photo. I want the best print that I can get for my customer. So I don't use the production mode and I don't use the regular FreeJet mode. I use the FreeJet 330TX photo. Um, for the image that I have here, anything with a black background, you're going to want to select black media photo. Anything that's not black, that is not white, you would want color or dark media. Now you could use white media on a gray shirt or any other light colored shirt, just know that it will not print any white ink. So whatever's white in the image will be the color of the shirt when it prints. Same goes for black, anything that's black in the, in the media will not print any black ink on the shirt. Now I like that, some people like to use dark photo for printing on black shirts to put black ink on it. Oh, excuse me. I personally don't like to do that. Um, I like to leave the shirt black in there. I think we get a better fade fade out when we do that. So I'm going to keep mine on black for this uh, 
demonstration here. Now, you don't really need to mess with these unless you're doing a DTF print. If you're doing DTF, you will change your ink layer order through color then white versus white then color. Now, we go into our properties for this particular layout and things that we need to look at on this particular screen here you're not going to mess with anything above the line but your margins this is how you're going to set your margin from the top of your platen so if you tuck your shirt where the collar is flush with the top of the platen what you'll want to do is say I want to print that uh, three inches below the collar you're going to come down here and put three for three inches below the collar and you can also click set as default if that's what you do all the time um, keep that in mind now if I was printing it um, like a pocket, I would put that down the same amount, but I would just move my position to the top right instead of top center. Um, ink assignment, leave that alone. You don't need to mess with it. Color correction, don't mess with it. Device options, mess with it. This is where you can uh, get a little bit more out of your print, a little more flexibility. So your resolution, standard on the free jets, 1440, 1440. If you really want to pound some ink down, you can lay down a crap load of white ink by putting that on 2880 by 1440. It's more higher resolution white. It's going to use almost double the ink cost to run that. Um, the second thing that you're going to look at here is your print direction. You can put it on universal versus bidirectional. Um, sometimes you get a little bit more ink out of the, out of the uni. Uh, your dot size, that's SML, is small, medium, large. You can change that to medium, large, uh, small, large, small, medium. A lot of times printers leave them on small, medium, large, but if you do change that to you want to really pump out some white ink, you would just make that medium, large. Um, and just so bigger ones there. Now, layering, count one. If you want to run, say, you have an all white design and you really want more than just the standard amount of white on it you really want to saturate that shirt you can layer count this up as many times as you want you can do it one you can also do zero now I'm going to come to why that's important in just a second um, but secondly we're going to go up here and we're going to change our color highlight so this here is for the white underbase setting this here is for the color now if you're printing 2880 on an underbase you do not have to match that in your color layer. You can run 1440. Um, you can also change your dot sizes and stuff and so on and so forth. And then we have our layering count. Now, if you have ever wondered, like, well, I've, I've sent a print through, it didn't look quite as vibrant as I would have liked it to, um, but now it's already gone back over and it's sent the color layer and so now I'm kind of screwed. You could always print right back over that color layer with white. You could bury it with more white ink. I've done it before. Um, if the design's not too wild and crazy, it'll work. But also, let's just say you wanted to print another, you printed a shirt and you want to do another round of color. You could do that. You could leave that at one. You could come over to your white underbase, knock that down to zero, and send it. It will not print an underbase layer. There's no, there's layer count is zero, as we see here. So that is helpful. Very helpful. Um, now, Second to that, if we needed to reprint a layer, like our Freddy here, we can right click down here in our queue manager. We can go to print selection. We see all of the selections here that we can print. We can print just the white under base. We can print just the color layer. It's gonna print exactly the same settings that you printed the first time, except one or whichever one you select. So if you run something that's an all white design, you're like, man, that's just not enough white. You can bump your settings, you can reprint it, or if you need to reprint the color layer, or let's just say you had a, a mess up um, with something in your printer, or you, you screwed something up and you needed to just rerun it, you didn't want to waste a shirt, that's an excellent way to do that. Um, if you <clears throat> Also, if you didn't know, you can come down to your queue manager, expand the uh, queue right there, and see what your cost of print ink cost is if you have that in there, how much time it took to print, the duration, all your print settings are set right there in your queue manager, which is nice to have. Like I said, I don't pay too much attention on ink costs. I've printed a bunch of shirts and have a pretty good idea of what it costs to print them. So I hope you found that informative. Uh, one thing that I, I do stress because I've done this a lot myself is anytime you change your environment from one to another it resets all these properties so if you printed this shirt and you said oh, I printed it on black I need two black and I need to print another color 
you know, it's a different design or whatever it may be. So you're like, oh, okay, let me go ahead and change my environment. And then you don't double check your margin and you send it and then it's printed all jacked up. So word to the wise, come up here, click print preview. I have this on the wrong color, black background. Click print preview and look at it and make sure it's what you need because I cannot tell you how many times I have just been doing five, six things at once in the shop and forgot to go back and double check my settings and send it through and then uh, instantly realize that I've just wrecked that shirt because it's not going to be acceptable for what I needed to do. I've done that more times than I need to. So keep that in mind. Always double check yourself. Always. Um, aside from that, those are the main things that I use in Cathari. I don't really have to use any of these other uh, pieces here. You can adjust your levels, your hue saturation. Now, if you go in here and you say, oh, I need to change my underbase, see how they're, they're highlighted out? They're highlighted out because they're actually in the queue manager. When you print these, come down here, all the settings are saved. So if you want to go back and readjust them, you will need to select all of these, delete your queue manager, now these are back and available. We can use these settings again and we can change everything in here because it hasn't printed it and it hasn't saved those settings. You can also, once you have your file, like say this is a PSD file, it's a Photoshop file, I can come in here and I can save my print settings to this particular file. So anytime I reopen it, that's exactly the same way as it printed before. That's how it's going to print again. No matter if you open that Photoshop file and edit it in Photoshop when you resave it, the print settings are stored separately within that file. So you can open it back up in Cathari and all of this stuff will stay the same. So that is also super helpful. Um, aside from that, those are the basic settings that I go through. Um, if you were going to rotate and print something sideways, so my, my platen's 12 and a half by 18. Let's say I needed to print something that was uh, 17 inches wide, 10 inches tall. I would set that position over here to top right center. I would turn my shirt sideways on the platen when I load it into the, uh, into the machine. So now my shirt is actually going the other way. I would take this image and I would rotate it. Uh, whichever direction it needs to go let's just say it needed to go this way and I would print that shirt right here with this setting boom right center so now it's gonna print this image I'll have a little bit wider space to go they also recommend doing that for hoodies because the pocket for the hoodie will be not in line with the shirt and it gives you a little more print space I will note from time to time um, even with a margin set here across the board at zero Sometimes it doesn't print my image dead center, which is kind of frustrating. I've had that happen once or twice on hoodies. So I always try to run a little test square. I just load up a little file and just make sure that everything's centered up in my print. But I hope you found this helpful. Um, there are some more tips and tricks that you might may or may not know about um, that you can run into. But these are the basic ones for me that I use that have been super helpful. Um, especially being able to just reprint color layers where I you know, ran a shirt and messed up um, it, or forgot to change a setting and was able to just reprint that shirt. So if you found this helpful, give me a like, leave me a comment, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to produce more content for the DTG, DTF, HTV community, um, as well as you know, just other stuff in general. So um, I hope to see you on the next video, and I hope you learned something.